were often the only boat out on the sea, the only boat for miles around. And the only thing you see is a ferry go by, or the odd yacht. And the freedom, the freedom of fishing. It used to be a lot freer than it is now, but it still feels like freedom. It was almost no choice. I was a month old the first time I went in the boat. My dad was a boatman and fisherman as well. He was a ferry man. He used to row a ferry across Bull Key. And one of my er earliest memories is my brother and I, my younger brother, sitting in the bow of the ferry boat, my dad rowing away. And we developed from fishing rods to nets to catching fish and just so exciting. Just love it. It's, it's not romantic, it's just, um, I don't know if it's primal. And then you can look at a sparkling sea and think that sea has been sparkling like that since time began, before there were people or even anything alive on the planet. And there's only about 12,500 fishermen in the country and we catch wild creatures that live a wild life in their environment. Once they get weak, they're gonna get eaten. In the past, there was probably too many boats, too efficient, now there's a lot fewer boats, obviously the fish get a better chance and they're coming back quite well. About, I don't know, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, something like that. Alright then. Alright, see you a bit later then. Bye bye. That's the sort of reply I like. What time are you going to be here? And they want more than we've got, so that's good as well. The ones that never give up are likely to be the ones that escape. The ones that just sit there accepting their fate, well, they're going to get their fate. But occasionally, you get one that's on the top and it doesn't stop moving, doesn't stop trying to escape. As soon as your back's turned, he's off. He's overboard. I can only take my hat off to that. So never give up. Fight, fight. challenge anyway because of the weather and the tide, the size of our boats, being down to 10 metres, can't go far. But the challenge has come from, from quotas. It's not like being told you can't earn any more than this amount. And then you've got the market, which sets the, seems to set the prices of fish, this year in particular, and it's fallen through the floor. It's about half of what it was three or four years ago. So we're not only allowed to catch less fish, we're going to get less money for it. Fishmen are, we are very ingenious and we will find ways to make a living. But there's fewer of us now. We're all getting older and there's not many young ones coming into it. The girls on the eat time is fast. Honestly, oh, so your cock crab come in and they process and eat themselves. Go! <laughs> Thank you. 
to fishermen, most they spend most of the money they earn on their boats and equipment, and what's left over, they can keep for themselves and their family. So you're always dreaming of, you know, the good catch, catching some treasure. I don't know anyone that's caught treasure. That's nah, just fisherman's fantasy. That is. The only way we get it is um, by working hard and getting in as many days as we can. We all feel sort of hard done by and under threat, and we do feel like the authorities don't really want us because the more rules and regs come out, quotas get cut, there seems to be more enforcement. And once the quota is exhausted, that's it, it's, that's the end of fishing until either the following month or the following year at times. The, but fishing has got to be for, well, it's got to be for the good of the nation. We're providing food, we're providing wild food, and it's a culture, and it'd be such a shame to lose it. And, ended up in the hands of just a few big boats and big fishing companies. We need a diversity, we need lots of small boats. People like seeing it. Yeah, I think Paul's got a good future, I really do. Just gotta keep at it. <laughs>